In this video, Real-Time Clock DS1307 is programmed in assembly to display time and date on MAC7219 8-digit 7-segment display. Integrated Circuit DS1307 is a real-time clock that counts seconds, minutes, hours, day, month, and year. It has onboard 56 bytes of programmable RAM, which is battery backed. It can give us a programmable square wave output at 1 Hz, 4 kHz, 8 kHz, and 32 kHz. And it is interfaced with a microcontroller using I2C connection. A block diagram of the DS1307 is shown here. It has onboard 64 bytes of RAM, which is fully programmable. The first 8 uh, bytes of this RAM is used for storing the time and the date. And the rest of the 56 bytes of RAM can be used by the user to store some other additional data. To access any location on this RAM for read or write, the user will send an 8-bit value via the I2C bus which is used to program this address register that will generate a memory pointer which will point to the location we want to read from or write to. As an example, let's say we want to program the seconds, minutes and hours of the real-time clock part of the RAM. So the first thing to do is to point our pointer into this location 00. We do this by sending 00 over the I2C bus to program the address register so now the memory pointer is pointing to location seconds the next step is to send using I2C protocol the bytes needed for seconds minutes and hours to program these three locations and the pointer after each write operation is auto incremented to point to the next location in this next example, let's say we want to read the minutes and the hours from the real-time clock RAM. So the first thing to do is to point to minutes, which has address 01. So we need to send the byte 01 over the bus to program the address register. So now we are pointing to minutes. The next step is to send an I2C read operation to read from minutes and the hours. A detailed look at the RTC part of the RAM is shown here from location 00 to 07. Location 00 is used to store the 8-bit value for the seconds, which will have a range from 00 to 59. Now here, the least significant nibble is used to store the least significant digit of the seconds while these three bits here are used to store the most significant digit of the seconds. The most significant bit here is called the clock hold. When set, it will pause the clock. Now these values here for the seconds and the 10 seconds is in binary coded decimal. As an example, let's say we want to store 55 seconds in the seconds register. So as I said, this value is in binary coded decimal. So this 5 here, the least significant digit, is stored as binary 0101, while the next most significant digit 5 is stored as binary coded decimal 101. And this value, which is the clock halt, is set to zero or the clock halt is disabled. In a similar fashion we can store the minutes value in the minutes register which is at location 01 and the range is from 00 to 59 again the values are in binary coded decimal. So let's say we want to store 58 minutes in the minutes register so 8 as a binary coded decimal would be 1000 and 5 will be 101. Next we have the hours register at location 02 and it can be programmed to give us either a 24 hour mode which will have a range from 00 to 23 
or we could program it into a 12 hour mode with AM and PM and it will have a range from 1 to 12. For this bit here, if we put 0, we get 24 hour mode. If we put 1, we get 12 hour mode. And this bit here, for a 12 hour mode, if the value is 0, then we have AM. If the value is 1, we have PM. And for a 24 hour mode, this bit becomes just another most significant bit for the 10 hour. As an example, let's say we want to program the hour register for 24 hour mode. So we set this bit here to 0. And then we look at the, let's say we want to store 16 hour. And again, this is binary coded decimal. So 6 is this binary coded decimal, 0110. And 1 here is the binary coded decimal, 01. In this next example, let's say we want to program the hour register for 12 hour mode and store this time 9 p.m. So first we set this bit to 1 to indicate 12 hour mode and then we want to indicate p.m. so we put 1 here and then we put the binary coded decimal value of 0, 9. So this would be the 9 and this would be the 0. This is the day register at location 0, 3 which is used to store the day of the week so for example one could be for Sunday two for Monday three for Tuesday and so on and the range is from one to seven and the date register at location zero four is used to store the date which will have a range from one to thirty one and for the month at location zero five will have a range from one to twelve and this is the year register at location 06 which will have a range from 00 to 99 again these values are in binary coded decimal as an example we want to set the date for the day we want to put 1 for Sunday for the date 19th this is the 9 this is the 1 and for the month October which is 10 this is 0 and this is 1 and for the year 2022 so 22 2 and 2 location 07 is the control register which is programmed to give us at the output of the IC a square wave with a programmable frequency this bit here of the control register when set will enable the output oscillator at pin SQW and the frequency of the oscillator will depend on these two bit values based on this truth table either we have a 1 Hertz 4 kilohertz 8 kilohertz or 32 kilohertz this bit here will determine the output DC level at pin SQW when the square wave output is disabled so a value of 1 means the, the DC level at the output is logic 1. If the value is 0, it means the DC level is 0. The microcontroller communicates with the real-time clock IC using I2C protocol. So this is the protocol for the write operation. And this is the protocol for the read operation. I2C write begins with the microcontroller sending the start pulse and then it will send the I2C address of DS1307 and logic 0 to indicate write operation. Real-time clock responds with acknowledgement and the microcontroller sends a byte to program address register in order to point to the location and RAM we want to write to. Real-time clock responds with acknowledgement and then the microcontroller will send the bytes needed to program the time and the date and in each case the real-time clock will respond with acknowledgement and finally the microcontroller will end the transmission with the stop pulse in the I2C read there's two operations first we have a write operation and then a read operation so we begin with the start pulse and then we send the I squared C address and then zero indicating a write. Real time clock uh, acknowledges 
and then we send the byte needed to program the address register so that we point to the location to read from. Real-time clock acknowledges and then we send another start pulse and the slave address but this time we have a read operation. The uh, real-time clock acknowledges and then the microcontroller will read the bytes at these locations and then the microcontroller acknowledges. And then the last byte read by the microcontroller must be followed by a no acknowledgement. And then the microcontroller will terminate the read transmission with the stop pulse. A circuit diagram of the implemented system is shown here. The DS1307IC is interfaced with the Arduino using I2C connection. The DS1307 is powered by this crystal oscillator running at 32.768 kHz. Also, the DS1307 RAM is backed up by this lithium cell battery connected to the battery pin. Also interfaced with the Arduino, we have the Max7219 8-digit 7-segment display connected to the Arduino using SPI connection. Finally, we have this push button connected to a digital pin. When pressed, will display the data on the Max7219. A quick look at the assembly code. The first thing we want to do is to write to the control register of the DS1307. So we send the start pulse and then we write the DS1307 uh, I2C address and then we send the value 07 which will let us point to the control register within the RAM and then we send this uh, byte here which will enable the square waveform output at frequency 4 kilohertz and then we send the stop pulse and then we apply some delay next we want to write the time 16 hours 58 minutes and 55 seconds so we begin with the start pulse then we send the right address and then we send the value 0, 00 so that the pointer is pointing to the seconds register and then we send 55 uh, binary coded decimal for the seconds and then 58 binary coded decimal for minutes and then we send the 16 hours binary coded decimal and here we are programming in the 24 hour mode and then we end the transmission with the stop condition and apply a short delay. Next we want to write the date which is day 12 month 1 year 22. So we begin we, with the start pulse then we send the right address of the device and then we send the value 04 so that the pointer is pointing to the date register. Then we send the binary code decimal 12 for the day and then the binary coded decimal 1 for the month and then the binary coded decimal 22 for the year and then we end the transmission with the stop pulse and then apply a short delay. Next we want to read the time. So we begin with the start condition and then we send the right address and send the value 00, 0 so that we are pointing to seconds which will be the location to read from and then we end the write transmission and then we begin with another start uh, pulse and then send the read address of the DS1307 and then we read the seconds save it in a register read the minutes save it in another register and then read the hour with no acknowledgement and save it in a register and then end the retransmission with the stop pulse and apply a short delay. 
In this part of the code, we read the day, the month, and the year. And then we apply a short delay. Next, we check the status of the push button, which is connected to pin PD4. If not pressed, then this instruction will be ignored. And we come to this part of the code, which will display the seconds on the MAC7219. And then this part of the code will display the minutes. And this part of the code will display the hours. Then apply a short delay and then jump back to label again where we will read the time and the date once again from the DS1307 IC. If the push button is pressed then the program will jump to this label display date. And at this location this part of the code will display the day and this part of the code will display the month and this part of the code will display the year then we apply a three second delay and then jump back to label exit where we will jump again to the part where we read uh, the date and the time from the DS1307 IC in a future video I will be programming real-time clock DS3231 using assembly DS3231 is a modified version of DS1307 thank you for watching